Welcome to the Shelter in Place Sessions. Welcome to the Shelter in Place Sessions. Welcome to the Shelter in Place Sessions. We're um, sheltering in place. We're sheltering in place here on the Dingle Peninsula and County Cary, Ireland, Ireland, Lafayette, Louisiana, Brown County, Indiana, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Tel Aviv, Idaho City, Idaho, Woodstock, New York, and the Swedish side of Sydney. We are really, really happy to be here with you all today. Uh, across the internet, the World Wide Web there. pandemic <laughs> well when when it hit um, my family and I were living in Madrid we were in Spain for the year COVID cut that year short we got out of the city but we couldn't get back here to our home in Santa Fe because the house was rented out for a year so we were in Newport Rhode Island for a while then we were in Taos and then finally we made it back here I was in Europe uh, in Italy to be precise producing an album uh, for an Italian rock band uh, during February of 2020 when the pandemic began there and entire towns were being put into quarantine and if you might recall it was pretty severe there. You know we're all sheltering in place this, at this time you know the whole reason for the sessions I suppose and we're still in level five, five lockdown here in Ireland so we're not we're not supposed to go further than five kilometers from your house. I got on a plane to come back to New Mexico and at the advice of the Department of Health I was informed that I should probably quarantine away from my family, away from everybody else for 14 days before uh, actually going home. So I found myself staying in uh, a condo owned by friends of ours who were out of town and not being able to go home to my family for two weeks. And this is uh, several weeks before there was even a case reported in New Mexico. I'm lucky to be surrounded by all my guitars and thankful for that. but. Man, I tell you, I cannot wait to get back out and see everybody in person. So I hope everyone's okay. I'm up in the mountains and um, doing a pretty excellent job of quarantining these days. So this is back to the fields when we have a ramble, uh, the midnight ramble sessions, which are these very cool concerts that my dad started um, a long time ago. And when we have these shows, we park all the cars out here in the field and people walk up here. This here is the studio. There's a beautiful stage and hemlock beams. And um, we're not going inside together because we're being smart and we're being safe. Up until the beginning of this whole pandemic thing, once or twice a month on the average, uh, for quite a number of years, we were hosting house concerts with the help of our partners in the local community. We had all these plans last year. We were actually coming over to your site with um, our bigger band, uh, Four Winds is the name of it. It's uh, our four piece band. So we were planning to be here with you in, in the flesh at this time, um, but look, we're here instead. Had some Southwest appearances that had to get canceled, just like everything else nowadays. Thanks a lot, COVID. But I am very hopeful that I'll get to see you all in the Southwest again really soon, and um, 
Actually, I just can't wait to go everywhere. All things that we can't do in our current situation. Go out dancing every night. Take a trip around the world. Especially not kissing all the pretty girls. Not all of them. I mean, I, who knows where they've been. I don't, I don't think you can do that anymore. <laughs> not yet, but hopefully we'll get to before we grow too old. all your life, you know that's fun, but when you don't have it, mm -hmm. you realize how much you, um, uh, it feeds your soul to, to hear live music and to play live music and to be around live music and socialize with everybody. And so I really did miss that. It's been um, a challenging year uh, for me personally, going from, and it just, just changes, you know, just changes of being somebody who's been on tour for uh, six to seven months of the year for the last 33 years, and now being in one place. And as challenging as it has been this entire time, it's also been a time when my wife and I have grown closer together. Um, I've written tons of songs. I have um, had more time than ever to spend with my two and a half year old son, Taj. I've been a touring musician and a recording engineer for the last 20 years. Um, and of course, with the pandemic, all of that ended, came to a screeching halt, you might say. Um, which in a lot of ways for me was perfect because it allowed me to take a break and to reconnect with my community and my family. Instead of packing up the car and getting on a plane, I was playing all these shows in the back office or next to the kitchen and, you know, I could hear my family and the dog and everything like that. And um, that was a, a neat thing for me to have that be integrated into my life more than it normally is. There's somebody come to get a shot of her. She's also sheltered in place with us. I have two teenage girls, and they kind of are always on the go. And for the pandemic, I kind of had them for myself. Too, right? And they're both musicians. Yeah, they're both musicians too. Um, but I had them for myself for a while, which was really nice. You know, you raise them to take off and go. But for me, I just enjoyed that time with them. And, you know, hearing them, they love singing together, so they sing together all the time. Sitting here in Eunice, Louisiana, at the Savoy Music Center, which has been my father's music store and accordion factory, where he builds his Acadian brand, Cajun Accordions, since 1965. From an early age, me and all of my siblings would come over here to the music store and help dad. He would give us little jobs working on various parts of the accordions, but I've never really sat down and focused, really dug in on this until the pandemic kind of, in a way, forced me into it. And so now, for the last year, I've been sitting here with my dad, building his, uh, his Acadian brand accordions. It seems like we're going through this really incredibly challenging time, but, and we are. And I recently lost my father to COVID, so I, I, I don't say this lightly. Um, 
And at the same time, we've all been asked to look in our hearts in new ways and see how it is that we're showing up for the people that we love and our relationships and for the planet. And, um, and there's, there's uh, gifts to be found in that. So this appreciation that all of us have right now for just being here with those that we love um, is one of those gifts. When indigenous peoples are protecting their, their mother earth and their ancestral home, we have often put up a love or a tipi. And uh, my grandfather, he uh, wrote a poem that uh, if the lavo is put up correctly with with uh, three um, strong poles, no no matter what winds are coming, it will stand safely. There's an ocean inside me, caused by a million flashes behind me, or bus sitting the you beside me, or a big blue storm surrounding me. There's an ocean inside of me. So deep I'm not sure you can find me But I'm right here, down on my knees Craving for you to come back to me, please There's an ocean inside of me Oh, there's not enough room for the entire sea So the salt water runs down my cheeks Landing on a lonely beach Vivianeg in Haitian Creole means the life of an old man and the song is talking about an old man that lives in poverty and it says the soles of his shoes are as thin as crepes and if the world is around it's not his fault. Money doesn't fall in the pockets of poor people. We do what we have to do to get by but as soon as it comes in it's gone. Not having any income for months and months and months on end gets to be tricky. And uh, I realized that there was a lot of things in my world that I could do, um, aside from growing more food and uh, doing more things myself. I always did have kind of a DIY attitude growing up in the country. I kind of just had to get like creative and figure out other ways to connect with people and then also make a living um, through virtual things. I did some music for podcasts, because a lot of people were starting podcasts during this time. You have to be able to adapt to be a jazz musician. You have to be able to improvise. You have to be able to think on your feet. Uh, you have to be able to pivot quickly, and you have to be able to communicate with people. And that's uh, 
all being challenged in this time. It got harder as the months dragged on. And um, I mean, I had lost a lot of shows, tours in Europe, things that I had been really looking forward to. And, and then it was about trying to figure out how to make the best of a, of a really hard situation with kids home. And um, I played a lot of online shows, which was very hard at first. This is uh, the third or fourth or twelfth time I've tried to record a set of music for you, and each time was thwarted by children or dogs or variable frame rates. So, wish us luck. This is, I hope, the one. The main line of this one is, uh, I caught my steel pony and boys, I'm gonna ride. And it goes a little something like this. Got that steel pony ride. <laughs> when you play music with other people, it's uh, it's like a conversation, right? You sit down and you react to what they do, and they react to what you do. When you um, play music by yourself, it can feel like a speech or a, a conversation with yourself about your shortcomings. Thank you all so much out there. I know everyone's clapping. There's so much applause. We're just going to envision it. It ultimately became something I, I actually enjoyed, uh, trying to find a way to create something real and intimate in this virtual, strange kind of world. We're very grateful to be uh, to be getting concerts and being asked to, to perform, even in the current times. It means the world to me that you, you, you would tune in and, and listen to this and uh, connect with my music because this is where we're at right now. People have been so generous, whether it be just like buying an extra merch shirt off Bandcamp or um, buying some extra CDs to hand out to their friends or family members, um, or just tipping me on Spotify, PayPal link or things like that. Thank y'all so much for all your support and keeping us going during this time creatively, financially, every way possible. It's been quite a year. Music really does mean a lot to people and they want to be able to show that even um, during hard times, I think. I mean, it's like what got a lot of people through this and what's still getting them through this. It's been going on a lot longer than we thought it would, but we're still playing music and keeping at it. So thank you all for supporting. time in my hands so I'm going through some old recordings old cassettes and this classic song from my younger days popped up some time when I made perhaps I was a little less sophisticated in my uh, songwriting but nonetheless I'd like to think brilliant Working on a like a acoustic retrospective, going back and playing my old uh, my old songs and uh, trying to record them here in my office. It's been interesting to go back and try to think about songs I wrote when I was 20 or 30 and try to find a new door on the house. I've always been working on the room with my music, but. Yeah, I ain't had enough time to stay home and say, well, look, man, let me, let me, let me really get into it. I said, well, man, I got the time to do what I want to do. It made me a better musician. And I said, well, you know what, I'm going to start learning all my songs where I can play acoustic by myself with it. 
you know, stop being lazy. I, like so many of my peers, I think, have also been writing a lot of new songs during this time because we found ourselves with some uh, unexpected time on our hands and uh, unexpected uh, inspiration of all kinds. In the beginning, I remember with great fondness, it was an incredibly powerful time. Um, I was able to sort of see with more clarity the things that mattered in my life and uh, songs felt important and I wrote a lot of songs. I have a feeling that when this situation finally runs its course, whenever that is, that there's going to be a flood of incredible new art of all kinds that people have been busy working on. The time off the road gave me time to just sort of work on new music and record. Most of the songs that I wrote on the EP that I came out with earlier this year in April, uh, it's, a, it's an EP called I Guess We Live Here Now. And all of those songs I wrote um, during the pandemic, um, they're not all necessarily about the pandemic, but just because that's what I was living in during the time, they did take on kind of some new meanings. recorded a record and uh, called Oh Quiet World in the attic of this house in Newport. Very stripped down, only basically me and my guitar and ukulele and then my kids sing a little and my wife sings a little. Did you play a lot of music? Did you write any songs? Did you? No, I'd, actually I didn't. I baked a lot of bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to make pie. I'd like to say I like woodshed it on learn to play something new oh, or <laughs> like I wrote an opus or I think you know it's because you have to kind of for me I have to be in like in a real calm headspace to be able to do that in a nothing felt calm nothing felt secure and personally that's a, that's a hard place for me to create from you know I create best when it's like everything's just real chill all the dishes are clean mm -hmm. you know and like it seemed like the world was falling apart so no, sadly I didn't write a lot, but I do feel like that's always something you can, you're going to be able to draw from, yeah. you know, it might be a year from now, all that stuff's still in there. Well, this next one we wrote about a year ago now, um, when everything was, was changing for everybody. It was kind of our way of, of sorting through that, I guess. And looking at it now, a year later, it, not in that direct light of the world shutting down. I realize that it kind of embodies the that feeling that any of us have with with any any unwanted change that we we come up against. All of us are dealing with isolation 
from the people that we love. And um, that feeling of isolation in my life has led, has been one of the things that has led me to have um, a lot of anxiety, stress, and hurt, and sadness, and depression. And um, as I was kind of going through a period of three or four days uh, about a month ago where it, things just, I was just having three or four rough days and I was saying, man, I just need a good day. I got to do something to switch this up. I got to, you know, get outdoors, talk to somebody, sit down and sing. And one of the healing ways for me has always been to write music. Music means something different to, to everybody. And for me, uh, it instills a great sense of hope into the universe. I think that jazz is one of the antidotes we have for this virus, for uh, this time when we can't really see each other and, and be out and, and be close to one another, which we're social beings. And we need, we need that. We need that connectivity. We always like to play music by Mr. Armstrong because when you hear the sound of his wonderful voice or the sweet notes coming out his horn, you know that no matter what kind of madness surrounds you, Everything's going to be all right. What a wonderful world. Well, I just got vaccinated. Some people don't want it. I wouldn't got mine. <laughs> For me, I would say that the pandemic has really had a, um, a beautiful ending. It's uh, redirected the trajectory of my life and I feel more focused and more connected to the world where I grew up. So looking forward to doing this for a long time. I think I've found some good in all of this and um, in all of the bad. And I think a lot of musicians have had really interesting twists and turns during this time. It's just life. <laughs> I was going to say it's good, but I mean, it's just life. Carry you alone. Carry you alone. Will you come along, son? This one long life. Carry you alone. As we're coming out of this time, there's this great opportunity uh, for us as a people and, and for songwriters to, to continue to try to um, focus on, on what's important and, and maybe scrape off some of the things that don't matter as much. I think that's part of the job of, of songwriters is to, is to help people see that. When you listen to that Louis Armstrong and you listen to that Duke Ellington and, they, and you listen to that John Coltrane and they go for the... For the climax, they, they reach for the heavens, you can feel the hope and, and, and you understand a little bit more about yourself every time. I think there's a lot that we took for granted that we no longer will and, and I hope that we can hold off normalizing as long as possible so that we can keep that uh, awareness of how, how special every moment is now that we know that we can't uh, just assume that things are going to continue uh, as they have forever. COVID has been... Um, really a time when all of us have been asked to look inside of our hearts and say, how is it that I'm showing up for the people in my life, for my own health, for the health of my family, my community, our countries, our planet? If we stand together, uh, then we'll, we can face any winds and uh, we'll be safe. Someday, hopefully, I hope to see you in person uh, soon. Hopefully when the world starts turning again, we'll all get to be in the room together. Hope to see you out there on the road one of these days. Take care. I'll see you later. Mwah. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for giving me a reason to sing today. Peace. You can't live without hope that things will change for the better. You can't live without the dream of someone reading your letter We've had dust storms before and spit out the dirt We've had droughts before but none quite like this God is roaring drunk and out on the town and Next year everything They will fall and we'll dance on the We'll fill up our bellies 
is the plentiful food. We'll eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah, next year, people, wait and see. We're next year, people, you and me. We're next year. Thank you very much. That's it from us. Lots of love to you. Take care. Be a genie.